In this video, I will show you how I set up my cameras. Please keep in mind that when we place a camera, apart from setting a specific point of view, we also adjust the brightness of our render. And that is why I set my cameras from the very beginning of a project, so that I can first achieve the desired brightness of my scene, and then I can start working on the materials. So, let me be honest with you, I know nothing about photography, but I will show you exactly the steps I follow, and they always work for me. Let's start. Go to the Command Panel. Click on the Create Panel, and then click Cameras. Choose Physical from the Object Type Rollout. Go to the Top View. Click to place the camera, drag the cursor, and leave it where you want to place the target. Right-click in the Perspective view. Click on the Name Perspective and choose Cameras, Physical Camera 001. We are getting a weird perspective here, but that is because Anything we design in 3D Studio Max is placed at height zero. So, if I go to the front view, you can see where our camera is, basically in our floor. So, the next step is to elevate it. To do so, click on the Select and Move command, right-click in the front view, and hit the H button from your keyboard. A list with all the layers of your project appears, so you can select both the camera and the target and click OK. Click on the green arrow and elevate the camera. At this point, please be careful, you need to enable so safe frames. To do so, click on the camera view, then click on the name of the window, Physical Camera 001, and enable Show Safe Frames. What this option does is to match the frame proportion to the output size we set in the Render Setup dialog box. So, it places this frame so that you can understand which part of this window will be rendered. More specifically, if you don't enable this option, 3D Studio Max stretches the four windows to fill in your screen. So, although you see this perspective, when you render, only part of it will be rendered. And that's what you will get. So, please be careful to always enable so safe frames so that you can see the correct proportion of your render. Moreover, it's good to know from the beginning where do you want to use your render. And this basically means to know the dimensions of your render so that you can set your camera accordingly. Of course, you can change those dimensions at any point, but let me give you an example so that you can understand what I'm trying to say. Let's say that I want to use this render in YouTube, so it needs to be 1920 pixels width and 1080 pixels high. In order to set these dimensions, we need to go to the Render Setup dialog box and more specifically, go to Rendering, Render Setup, go to the Common tab and go to the Output Size. Type those dimensions in the Width and Height fields. You can see how our window proportions adjusted. Now, let's say that I changed my mind and I would like to use this render in Instagram. There, we prefer the rectangular format for our post, so let me set the output size to 1080 pixels, both width and height. Do you see how our window adjusts? The camera remains at exactly the same point. The only thing that changes is the width-height ratio. So, let me now set the values back to 1920 and 1080 and move on. 
We have placed the camera. Let's now say a few things about its position. In my example, I have set the camera to look straight on the vanity and to see this whole elevation. So, let's also do this together. Go to the top view. Select the camera. Click on the Select and Move command. Click on the red arrow and drag to place the camera somewhere here, which is almost in the center of the room. Then, select the target. I will zoom in, but you see that it's a bit hard to select it since other objects are on top of it. So, an easy way to select the camera is to hit the H button from your keyboard and then select the physical camera 001.target and click OK. Click on the red arrow and drag your target to align with your camera. Another way to easily select the camera is to go over here to the selection filter where it says All, click and select cameras. What does this filter do? It allows us to select only the type of objects that we will choose here. So if we choose cameras, then we can only select cameras from the various viewports. If I click here, I immediately select the target. If I try to click anywhere else, nothing is being selected. Once I will select all in the selection filter, I will be able to select again all the objects of my project. Now, we have set the camera to look straight on the vanity, but our view is very zoomed in and we want to go further back so that we can see the whole wall here. Select the camera. Click on the green arrow and move your camera at the very back. Please be careful not to go behind or in your wall. Although I have set my camera to the back end of the bathroom, I still can't really see the bathroom design. I'm still zoomed in. So what do we do in cases like this where we have small rooms? Select the camera and go to the Modify tab to see its parameters. The Modify tab is the second button in the command panel. Go to the physical camera rollout. Let's first explore the focal length. With this parameter, we adjust how wide our camera will look. The lower this value, the wider our camera. The default value is 40 millimeters. Let's type 30 and click Enter. Now we can see a bigger part of our bathroom. We get the illusion that we stepped back, but in reality, our camera didn't move. Let's make it 20 and hit enter. Can you see the difference? I personally avoid to use values this low. I usually work with values between 30 and 40. The lower I go from 30, and especially if I go to values like 20 and 25, my room starts to get a bit distorted and it looks bigger than what it is in reality. So let me make it 30 and let's now see what the next step will be to have a better overview of our bathroom. Scroll down to find the miscellaneous rollout. Enable the clipping planes. What does this option do? It allows us to set our camera behind the wall and see past that wall. Let's see that in our example. Set near value to 100 centimeters. A red line appears that shows us where these 100 centimeters are in relation to the location of our camera. So you can see that the glass division is no longer visible and we can see better the vanity wall. Now I will select my camera and push it further back. I don't care anymore that my camera is placed behind the wall since it's this red line that I'm now interested in. My camera is seeing from this point forward. Instead of 100, I will make it 150 and go further back. Now, 
Now I finally have a clear view of my bathroom and I'm all set. What I could do next is to play around with the height of the camera. Let me explain to you my philosophy on the cameras and let me be clear that's just what I like to do in my renders. You should follow the workflow that you like. When I set a camera, almost every time I set it to see straight on and not at an angle. And why is that? Because when we use clipping planes, we must be careful not to cut part of our layers. If we cut a layer, the cut part will be rendered black. The red lines of the clipping planes and the blue lines of our camera allows us to understand if we cut any objects. So, let me set the camera at an angle. It starts to get a bit tricky because you can see the red line either cuts a wall or the glass divider or both. Let's leave it somewhere here and produce a render. You can see here the black rendered parts I mentioned earlier. So let me put the camera back to face straight on. As far as the height is concerned, I always set both the camera and the target at approximately the middle of the room. Now, the height of this particular bathroom is only 240 centimeters. So, by setting our camera at the center of the room, we basically set it at 120 centimeters, which I know that it sounds kind of irrational, especially if we consider that the average height when we take a photo is 160 to 170 centimeters. But let me place the camera at 170 centimeters to see what we will get. One way to set our camera at a specific height is to select the camera, click on the select and move command and go to the coordinates and type the desired height at the Z field. So I will type 170 and repeat this process for the target. So, do you see the result we get if we place our camera that high? Now, there isn't really a balance in our render. We see too much of our ceiling and a small part of the main bathroom design. Although, instead of having our camera facing straight on, we can push the target lower, like that. I personally though prefer to always face straight on. So, let me align the camera and the target and lower them so that I can see part of my floor. If I want to give more height to my render, I will move the camera further to the back and I will adjust the clipping planes. Up until now, I only explained the near value of the clipping planes. Let's now see the far value. Our camera will be seeing only the objects that are between the near and the far lines. Let's type 500 centimeters at the far value. Did you notice what happened? Our background disappeared. Let's go to the top view to see why. Let's zoom out and see where the far red line is located. So you can see that our background is behind the far value and that's why we don't see it in our camera. In order to see it, we need to increase the far value. Let's try 850 and hit enter. Now we can see it. 
As I said at the very beginning of this video, we adjust the brightness of our render through the camera settings. I am interested in three values, and those are the F number, where I keep the default value, which is 8. The shutter speed, where I also keep the default value. And finally, the exposure value, which is the only setting that I play with. Go to the exposure rollout. I will start my testing using the value 13 in the target field. That's the render we get with exposure value 13, which is pretty dark. So let's try 11 and re-render. The lower the exposure value, the brighter our render will get. This is better, but you can see that our scene gets burnt at some, spo at some parts. How can we fix that? In the V-Ray frame buffer, click on the first button at the bottom left, the Show Corrections Control. This window appears to the right. Go to the Exposure, enable it, and click on its name to open it. The Highlight Burn adjust these burnt parts. Instead of 1, let's scroll to the left toward 0, and you can see how improved our overexposed parts now look. Go to the contrast setting to adjust the contrast of our render. I usually set it to 0 0.1. Why, if you go to the exposure setting, you can adjust the brightness of your render. The brighter the render, the more highlight burns we will get, so we will need to readjust the value below. One more setting that I adjust here at the Corrections Control is the Curve. This gives more depth, more con contrast to my render. Enable the Curve and click on its name to open. Then click on this rectangular at the top right and this anchor will appear. Drag it to the top. This adjusts the bright areas of your render. Now click on the bottom left rectangular and another anchor will appear. Drag this one to the bottom. This one adjusts the dark areas of your render. I usually try to create an S shape in the curve, something like this. That's all for now. I do believe that the cameras are one of the very important aspects of our render process, so take your time to place them and don't rush it. Have fun.